Hey y'all, happy Sunday. I don't know how happy y'all are out there, but I know it's been a rough week. I know I've had um, bereavement from um, close loved ones and then to see the news of the passing of our beloved Chadwick Boseman I would totally understand if there's some people out there who are not having a happy Sunday. However, we got to push forward. And that is why <clears throat> it was a must that I show up for you all this morning and to bring forth this reading for the week. So welcome to Soul Food Sundays. Um, as you can probably hear in my voice, um, I am energetically not in the best of spaces, but I am so thankful to, to be alive, to be present, to be able to communicate and connect with you guys. And so, uh, in that spirit and space of gratitude, I'm going to keep pushing because we got to pr keep pressing. We got to press toward the mark. And even though, you know, we're missing some things or some people, uh, I know specifically as it comes to um, Chadwick, he, he did what he came here to do and he did it profoundly. Um, I do have a Chadwick Black Panther story. So uh, two years ago, he came to St. Jude, <clears throat> unbeknownst to us, doing work with children suffering from cancer while he was uh, suffering with the disease as well. And I got a call from my coworkers, and they were like, um, "Black Panther is here. He's he's on campus. He's visiting with the children." And I was like, "God damn it! That's just my karma. I had called in sick that day. I wasn't sick. I was just tired. Okay, I was sick. I was sick and tired. But I was like, see, that's what happened when you call in sick when you ain't really physically sick." Stuff, stuff like that happen. You miss an opportunity to possibly meet Black Panther. But I, I just think it was awesome that he would put himself um, out there and just keep pressing towards uh, leaving a legacy and working and walking in his purpose, even though he, um, he was ill himself. And so that's a great example for us. I pray that we are able to see the silver lining in each and every trial that we face and um, to better help us do that, especially in this upcoming week, I'm going to be pulling from the Divine Animals Oracle Cards. So <clears throat> we're going to go into prayer and then I will see what message Spirit has for us for this week father god mother earth ancestors and spirit guys we thank you for this opportunity to connect with you thank you for each and every way you showed up for us this week and we ask you god that you bring forth the best messages for our highest good as we navigate the week ahead <clears throat> amen okay we're gonna take what came out the spirit knew exactly what we wanted to know and what message needed to go <laughs> needed to come for okay the butterfly the soul make sure I'm showing y'all the cards so this is the butterfly representing the soul and that's tripping me out because uh, for one thing in most decks the symbology of the butterfly represents transformation, but in this particular one, it represents the soul. The beaver, representing work. The dolphin, representing happiness. And release. That's the Jaguar. I'm just curious to know what's on the top and bottom deck. <laughs> Ancestors, the polar bear. So that's the top. <clears throat> what's on the bottom? 
Reliability. The goat. It's a big ass goat. So, this message, in my mind, is very plain and simple. We are being called to focus on our soul work, what makes us happy, and releasing anything that uh, would stand in the way of that. As we move into this week, we have a full moon coming up. I'm not sure what it's a full, what sign it's in, um, so I'll have to look into that. But we do have a full moon coming up on the 2nd of September, uh, which is a great time. That energy is primed for releasing. So, <clears throat> as we are doing so, we want to be mindful of relying on our ancestors. They're here to help us navigate these murky waters. It's, it's There's nothing new under the sun. We've seen all of these things that are occurring uh, before. The deaths, losing loved ones, the trials and tribulations, the poverty, the, um, the civil unrest the racism like every the environmental issues we're seeing it in a new way but it's not new and our ancestors have all the knowledge power and wisdom to help us to navigate these murky waters and to get back or stay in our happy place so there are so many ways that we can connect with our ancestors we can connect with our ancestors through prayer we can connect with our ancestors through meditation in our dream state through journaling. We can connect with our ancestors through spiritual baths. Um, there's so many ways to connect with your ancestors to receive the answers to those things that you are confused about, those things that you are working on, don't quite know which direction to go in, but you definitely want to dedicate some time and effort and attention to doing your soul work. The butterfly representing the soul. The beaver representing work. If you're familiar with the um, the beaver, they're known for being a hard-working animal. They build their own shelter, uh, their dams. Dolphins representing, which have been showing up a lot for me lately. Dolphins representing happiness. Happiness being an emotion. Dolphins living in and thriving in water water representing emotion I, and if i'm not mistaken that is um yamaya the um orisha yamaya who is the the mother of water on this image so we're going to read <clears throat> the brief descriptions for each of the cards, each of the four cards, not the top and the bottom card, because that's plainly telling us to rely on our ancestors as we do this work that these four cards are calling for us to do. So the butterfly number 28, which 28 breaks down to a 10, 10 representing completion, and butterflies representing um, transformation which is also a completion is very symbolic of the cycles that we are in right now some of us are ending um ending a cycle ending a cycle and, and we all know that once you get to the end once you can see the finish line that's when it gets hard that's when you, you're out of breath you're tired you need your your ancestors and your and your spirit guides and your friends and loved ones that are around you rooting for you so that you can make it to the end of the race and so that's something that may be uh resonating with someone out there that you are you're right there you, you're on the brink of what it is that um you've been working so hard to achieve just keep keep going keep putting in the work because your happiness lies on the other side it's just going to require releasing some of the baggage that's holding you holding you down and keeping you from maybe getting to the finish line a little faster or a little more effectively. So the butterfly, um, the soul, to experience our full selves, we often go through a difficult period of transformation and growth. Trust what you feel. 
We all have stages to pass through in life, and not all are easy. Look ahead to where you wish to be, not where you have been. Self-trust and the trust of your partner are necessary for a positive relationship. So for those of you who are in relationship, and let's not get it twisted, relationship doesn't have to mean um, a, a significant other or, or like a love relationship or um a sexual relationship or a romantic relationship it could be a friendship it could be talking about a professional relationship it could be talking about a kinship or a, a relationship with your mother your father your, your children we all have relationships so if you are um, if you are experiencing some trouble trouble or shake up in any way in a relationship this card is calling you to trust yourself and trust your partner so that you um, can have a positive outcome and to rely on what lies deep within your soul, connecting with yourself uh, on a soul deep level in order to bring this transformation and this cycle of growth into fruition. So the beaver, which is number 27, which breaks down to a nine, nine being that, that number that represents being just before the brink, right before completion, that, that, that last step before you are completing that cycle of transformation or bringing something into fruition. So just, and that's work. That's, it takes work to hold on or to press, press through when you're at that point on your journey. So, the beaver, work. To love your work is a gift. Find a balance between work and rest. It's worth aligning your work with your purpose if you can. Being positively, mindfully engaged in your work, no matter what it might be, is healthy. Someone may be attempting to micromanage you at your job, and this is not an optimum way to work. Perhaps it's time to be your own boss. So, if... In the midst of your soul transformation or if intuitively uh, you're getting nudges toward um, entrepreneurship, this message is telling you, hey, go for it. That's what God is trying to move you into doing something more independent and putting, rolling your sleeves up and putting in that work um, to do so. And, or if not entrepreneurship, just to be more mindful of working in your purpose to not just go and work a nine to five and then come home and do nothing and get up and go work a nine to five again and come home and do nothing no in your free time manage balancing work and rest and 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 the work that you're doing in your free time being more in more alignment with your purpose and if you don't know what your purpose is that's the work for you to get away from the distractions to get focused to get in alignment to go within to meditate and and just find solitude and really focus on and pray about um being connected with your purpose knowing your purpose god will reveal it to you there's some things that we are wanting to know that we're missing one key step in and that's asking god for the knowledge for the wisdom so um you want to make sure you're putting forth that work, putting your ego on the back burner and um, making your soul work a priority. So the next card is number 42, which breaks down to a six happiness represented by the dolphin. Six is very much a number that represents emotion and relationship. Happiness is not a continuous state. Although it is a worthy feeling to seek, know what makes you happy and do more of this. Happiness has everything to do with your reaction to life rather than what happens to you from outside sources. If you place your happiness solely in the hands of other people, then you will be disappointed. And yes, that is the goddess Yamaya um, on this card here. Because the description gives um, like a brief myth mythological connection to 
each of the cards. And it says here, the goddess Yamaya began as an Orisha, a spirit of rivers and watery places in Africa. When her waters broke, all the waters of the world were released. So her realm is the water, whether that be sea or river. Yamaya slips between the waves, fishtailed like a mermaid, playing between the waves with moonlight woven within her hair. She is the mother of all and the nourishing and life-giving power of water. So as you are doing your soul work, you may want to incorporate some water rituals, whether it be a spiritual bath, which would be just a bath with some sea salts, or uh, your favorite essential oils. Read up on essential oils and what metaphysical properties they have. And if it's something that you connect with or you're needing, wanting to connect with, put some of those essential oils into your bath water, uh, along with some sea salt for cleansing and um or you can buy a specially formulated uh spiritual bath um mix there's a lot of information out there if you just want to google or go on pinterest um or you want to take a trip go and be near the water the water is the, uh, the sea the ocean the lake a river it's all very healing and um it's it's good to use for not not only work um working on your soul but also your emotion because there's a very deep connection there um water is great for helping you to get grounded it is still of the earth and anything that is of the earth is a great tool or resource to help us to get grounded and to deal with some of the um the winds or the storms that are coming through in our lives because each day that we wake up we don't know what to expect we don't know what's coming and what's going but we just have to be open we have to trust god and we have to be willing to release which is our next card number nine so we have two cards representing the number nine here with the jaguar um so let's see release what you no longer need take action to move something from the ideas world into the physical world let go of the old and stale and choose renewal. Wash away the negative aspects of the past. Surrender it all and embrace the new. Wash it away. Like they, like this, the message of this card is telling us, capitalize on the uh, healing properties of water. Some of us may just need to be drinking more water and, and detoxifying our system, hydrating ourselves. Um, you'd be amazed at how that will affect you mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, just to increase your water intake. Um, with this full moon coming up on the second, you may want to make some moon water. Get you a, a, a glass container, a jar, a mason jar or something of that nature and fill it with some spring water and put it outside so that it can absorb some of that moon energy. And you drink it or you use it in your bath or you wash your face with it or whatever it is that um, you would like to do to better connect with the energy of the moon and to better be able to use it um, to help you with your soul work. There's so many resources and tools that God, Mother Earth, has given us um, for the purpose of helping us with our soul growth. So um, I hope that this message will help someone out there in need of some guidance or direction as we move into this week. Um, I'm about to get on with my day, but I'm glad that I was able to kind of pull it together and um get with you guys today and until next time peace